And Sandy, you'll see me looking off to the, to the side and that's where I have my laptop. So when I'm taking questions from the audience, that's where they're gonna pop up. Okay. So I, can't, I have not figured out how to do it on the... Uh... All right, we're, we're good, we're good. So this is the part that my friend Soydan uh, always makes fun of and he made a video and posted it of all the times I say, I think we're live, I think we're ready to go. So let me, let me, <laughs> let me, uh, cause I, I've, I've, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just a moron with a camera in a basement. So I, I've just kind of figured that out. This is kind of a fun thing to do in the, it, while I'm not out doing shows. So, um, and if I were a, a real professional, I'd have like an intro and, you know, car crashes and explosions and all sorts of fun stuff. So perfect. Um, Let me turn the volume down on this so I don't have the, the feedback. And it looks like we've got about a half dozen people on. So awesome, awesome. So Sandy, thanks for coming on today. Um, I'm uh, I'm glad I, I we. It's been a while since we started talking about this, and I'm really excited to have you on. And I've got uh, a, a list of questions for you. And I know that there's some other folks out there that have some questions. So if anybody has any questions for Sandy, go ahead and post them to the Facebook, uh, and I'll, I'll make sure I get them asked. So Sandy, kind of give us a, a little rundown of of uh, of how you of of yourself and who you are. <laughs> um, well, I'm Sandy Johnson, and I uh, grew up between San Antonio, Texas, and LA, and Hermosa Beach, Manhattan Beach, so I've been kind of back and forth through most of my life. My parents like to move a lot. I was a uh, child of a military family, so we did do some moving. I... Um, I left my first husband back around the time of uh, HOTS, I believe, and uh, moved back to Texas to uh, be with uh, my family. I also lost both of my parents pretty close to that time. So I was kind of a, a mess emotionally. So I left all of that, came back to Texas where I got an apartment and a roommate and kind of started a whole new life. I went to college, became a teacher for children with special needs, did that for probably 15 years. Then I got my PhD, started writing um, environmental science courses for the internet for uh, universities. Then I, um, I got married in there somewhere 30 some years ago. I made a much better choice the second time, <laughs> and uh, we have um, kids, grandkids. Uh, we live very rural, beautiful area in North Texas. So that's kind of where I am. I just uh, was living a life totally unaware of what was going on in the horror community <laughs> until my Rick until Rick found me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's an interesting story because um, the, the woman that played Pam um, in Chainsaw Massacre was kind of the same thing. She was working in an office and I, and I, I got her name on the tip of my tongue and she was working, I think in an insurance office and she got a phone call inviting her to a convention and she had no idea that those things even existed. And it was the, I think it was like the 40th anniversary of Chainsaw Massacre. So, wow. so you have the, uh, the, what I think is the very honorable distinction of being the very first victim of I the of Michael Myers, who which I think is the, is the the crowning franchise in in horror history. So you have uh, you have the, the the distinct honor of being the first victim, and uh, that's 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 pretty fun. I mean, how how did you get? If you want to talk a little bit, how did you how did you get into the role? How did they find you, or how did you find the role of Judith Myers in in 1978 Halloween? I was, of course, I had been in acting as far as school wise. I was in drama. I was in dance production. I was in dance. All of those things. I just, I was just love creative things. And I, I, I didn't, I wanted to be a professional dancer. That's kind of where I was headed. And my father got very sick with cancer and we needed money. He wanted a treatment out of Mexico and it was expensive and we didn't have it. So I found out that Playboy uh, play quite, uh, paid quite a bit. So I applied and was accepted as a playmate in uh, June of 74. 
And so I had the money to help um, with my dad's treatment. So that kind of got me from the school side to more of the professional side. I went with the Playboy, the Playboy agency. So they were sending me out on a lot of things. I mean, I did clothes modelings and furniture modeling, all kinds of things for them. But also if a film company was looking for someone to do nude scenes or whatever, a lot of times they would go to, to the Playboy agency. And that's basically what happened. I got a call and they were looking for someone for the babysitter murders. And so I went to that interview and I read several different parts. And then a few days later, I got a, uh, my agent got a call and said that I had been cast as Judith Myers. Well, and, and what Sandy was referring to is before we came live, we talked a little bit about the original name for Halloween was called the Babysitter Murders. And, and which, which I think we both agreed would have been death of the franchise. I don't think it would have gone much further after the baby because you have, you know, you have this, what was it? Slumber Party Massacre came out in the early 80s. And uh, those kind of those kind of movies just kind of fell on the wayside. But right. so so do you have any fun um, Hugh Hefner or Playboy Mansion stories from uh, from the days that uh, you were under their, the agency? Well, let's see. The the Playboy Mansion, of course, was an incredible place. I visited both the one in Chicago and the coolest things about the Chicago Mansion were that the Playmate suite was up suite was upstairs and it was hidden behind a, a door, a uh, bookcase. Oh, so it was yeah. actually a hidden place. So if you didn't know that's where it was, then you wouldn't have known where the playmates stayed. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. And then there was a bowling alley, which was pretty cool. And it also had a bar that looked into the swimming pool from underneath. So oh, wow. that was yeah, those are the things I thought were fun uh, at the at the Chicago mansion. In the California mansion, it had a zoo, which was very cool. So you could go out and walk and there were animals uh, in cages and stuff, you know, outdoors. It was very nice, so it was a beautiful area. And so you could visit with the animals, walk around there. He had an amazing swimming pool with a waterfall and an underground grotto. So you could swim uh, underneath in like a cave. And of course they had volleyball and you could order anything you wanted. I mean, you could order just lobster, wine, whatever you wanted when you were there. And um, there was a huge game room that had air hockey and all kinds of, so it was just a big party house, really. So yeah, both of them were amazing. And they had great parties like pajama parties and things. So yeah, it was cool. I, I know we're gonna talk about conventions and kind of the, uh, the business of, of conventions here, here shortly, but at these conventions, do you often sign uh, June 1974 Playboys? Do, you, do people bring those around still and have you sign them? I sign a few. Um, I think I sign more of them on, well, two, two places. I sign quite a few on my, through my website where they mail it to me, but I also have a Playboy agent who handles that part of it. And he has, a, he has my things up on the adult side of eBay. So he okay. runs a lot of auctions up there. That's where my, uh, my baseball hat I saw that that recently sold. I said, how much, yeah. if you don't mind yeah. telling, how much did that hat sell for? It sold for about $950. Awesome. That's really yeah. cool. So, so, and that was in a short amount of time. If I guess if I had really advertised it a bunch, it, it might've gone for more, but um, anyway, he, he, uh, he did that on there and he does photos uh, from other playboys of me and stuff. So he has a nice collection. Okay. And he's we'll been put doing that. Um, I don't know if, if uh, anybody out there has that access. If Aaron or Vic is watching, uh, if you'll put the links up on uh, on the Facebook, um, unicornsandyj.com is your your uh, your site. Is that correct? And that's what you do: uh, cameo yes. appearances and videos and autographs. And I got a couple sent from you. I've got one of the uh, the artist rendition of you with the mask, and then then this one, which I think is my favorite of them. It's the view from the mask. And, and I read this morning that this was not, it wasn't filmed this way, that that, that effect was added afterwards. So that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of fun. So mm -hmm. um, 
we um we want i want to talk a little bit more about halloween they uh your your scene is in the first it's the opening sequence correct Correct. And, and it, it was filmed very, very last. It was the last thing filmed. Right. What, what was your experience throughout the movie? Did were you just there for, I mean, did you get to see any of the other parts? Were you part of the, uh, the other, or what was the, your experience with the movie and how did, how did you got the role through, through your playboy agency? Um, were you a fan of horror before? Were you a fan of John Carpenter? Were, were you, uh, what was your, your experience with the, the genre before that? Um, I was not familiar with John Carpenter at the time, but I was definitely a horror fan. My girlfriends and I were all horror fans, and that's what we did on the weekends or sometimes at night if we could. But yeah, we would all get together and have slumber parties and, and horror movies is what we did. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, the filming with the house was kind of interesting because it is the very first opening scene. But in that opening scene, the house is one in which people live in. So it's all very nice, you know, it's all fixed up. And in the rest of the movie, it is not a nice house. And the house itself, when they found it, was not a nice house. So they did all of the filming with it decrepit and, you know, worn down and everything first. And then they started fixing it up for my scene. And so even while I was there that morning, they were still doing, you know, finishing touches on different things to make it look lived in and, and a, more of an alive house, not a dead house. So that was kind of fun that it was actually the last and not the first scene. Right, right. And, uh, and you actually, that, you also received a credit and your scene was in the 2018 remake. Is that correct? They, they, correct. And, and so did you get to be part of any of that anniversary celebrations and then the conventions for that? I did. They, uh, my agent found me in the summer of 2018, and it was about two weeks before they wrapped Halloween 2018. So whenever my agent found me, he said, is it okay if I give your information to Blumhouse because they have been looking for you uh, to, because they wanted to use some of your archive footage in 2018. So I said, sure. So we, we got in just under the, <laughs> the deadline and they were able to, to put it into the graveyard scene, which is a really good place for it. So I'm glad that they did that. They also uh, invited me to come out, to fly me out for the, um, the, for, for the premiere, my husband and I both. So we got to walk the red carpet and go to the after party and, and, uh, deal with the paparazzi. It was so much fun. We yeah, there's some life. great pictures of you and your husband online in the, in the, on the red carpet with your husband's awesome beard. And, and uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, there's some really great pictures that, that looked like that was probably a lot of fun. So what did you, exactly. what did you think of the, the evolution of, of 1978 Halloween to the 2018 Halloween? What did, what did you, I mean, I, I'm assuming you've seen, seen all of the the, the renditions of it. What, what do you think about the, uh, the evolution from the, you know, the first Halloween had a budget of $300,000 and, and half of that was spent, you know, pre-production. So, so what, what, what did you, what do you think of the evolution of, of, of the franchise of Halloween? Well, of course I love the original, just its simplicity is just marvelous. I mean, it, it, it has so many things that to me were just gold. But I also really like 2018 for other reasons. And some of those are that they had more money. The house um, that Jamie Lee Curtis lives in with, um, you know, the island that rotates and just all the things in the house. I really like the house and what they did with it. I think it's very cool. I like technology. That's my science background. So I love things that have to do with the, the way they can um, special effects and stuff. So I thought the house was cool. The, um, I loved some of the things that I thought kind of compared that I really liked was the scene at the sanatorium thing where they're all, uh, you know, doing this with the sticks and, and they're trying to, they're holding up the mask. I thought that was really good. And it reminded me of some of the stuff in the original Halloween that's just creepy and just kind of makes your heart, you know, your uh, heartbeat race and stuff so that was um really good 
so yeah, I mean, I, th I thought it was good. I liked the character development in it. There was maybe a little bit more of that. Some of the people lived a little longer <laughs> to get their, yeah. their personalities in there. And they weren't, they weren't killed off in the first, you know, five minutes, right, right. Right. So yeah, I, I liked both of them. And, and I thought they did a nice transition really from one to the other. So yeah, I liked it. Well, and one of the one of the things that, that in doing some research on the Halloween franchise for this for our, for our talk was Donald Pleasance wasn't the even the I think he wasn't even the fourth choice for the role. They they had gone deep, and Peter Cushing's was the first choice. And I, looking back, you know, I was I was, I mean, I, I didn't see Halloween when it came out. I was I was three in 1978, and so I, I didn't see it until until you know my my early teens. But I don't think Donald I don't think anybody could have done a better job than Donald Pleasance. I thought he kind of made the role. Of, of Dr. Loomis. I thought that was that was uh, maybe a happy accident that the other three people turned it down. I thought he was he was amazing. I mean, he, he, he really made that Dr. Loomis role. And I think it kind of set the tone for, for the for the future of the franchise having having such a such a kind of dramatic serious actor as as, uh, as Loomis as as kind of the enemy of the enemy. So the right. um, the and then one of the biggest controversies about Halloween and, and I and we'll move on to some other stuff. I don't want to beat, beat you to death on Halloween movies you weren't in. Um, but it's <laughs> Halloween three, you know, that was, that was a big, uh, you know, I, I remember renting the videotapes one, two, and three one night to watch them and not knowing that what, what happens in number three, that three was a complete diversion of, of the, the Michael Myers story. And, um, I, I, I mean, I don't know what, what, what you would have to do with it or anything, but I just kind of wanted your thoughts on the franchise that you're, you, I mean, you're, 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 you're famous for a lot of things, but you will be branded as Judith Myers is, as, as uh, right. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, you sell, you sell tombstones, right. That have, have it on there. So, so I just kind of want your thoughts on, on Halloween three. And then, then I want to talk about some other things you, you've done. Okay. Halloween three, is that season of the witch? That is, it's the uh, Shamrock, Shamrock uh, gift company or Shamrock toy company. Right. I know a lot of people didn't care for it, and obviously it is definitely a big swing from the others, but I actually really liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's totally different. I don't like it in as a sequence by any means, right. but I like it as a horror movie. As a standalone movie, it, as a standalone story, it probably would have done yeah. very well. Yeah, as a standalone story, I thought it was very creative. Um, I thought the acting was good. I mean, yeah, my husband and I both enjoyed it. And I would watch it again and probably again after that. So yeah, I it probably, was good. yeah. I, I I'm gonna encourage everybody to go watch watch the first one and then watch the third one. <laughs> so that that's a. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So they really have nothing to do with each other. Why they even gave it that name, I don't know. Um, Shamrock <laughs> might have been a better name, but I I definitely enjoyed it. But I I don't know. Something happened in there when. Uh, they diverted to all the other ones. I mean, there are some good ones in there, but they're, they don't belong to me. They're just out of place. So it, it kind of goes Halloween, Halloween to 2018, and maybe the other two will follow there. And the others should just be pushed into a separate thing. Right, right. <laughs> there well, are I some think good ones. Some of the credit that, that goes to Jason Bloom, I think, at Bloom House Productions. I mean, he's you can tell watching the movies that he makes that he is a he's a horror fan. You know, it's yeah. like it's like there's a couple guys out there making horror movies that are that are horror fans. He's one and uh, Eli Roth is another one that are making movies because they're they're fans of the genre, not corporate guys that are sitting behind knowing what sells. And, and so that's why I thought 2018 was was a good uh, a good restart the, the, with new writers and, and kind of a new direction to get us away from the. Uh, just the, the, the factory um, sequels, the factory sequels, the factory sequels, the way that, you know, that, that the Friday the 13th um, franchise went where it was just, it was an A plus B equals C movie every time. And it was really, really boring. So yeah. uh, before we went, we went live, we talked a little bit in 1978, 1979, you did four movies. Is that, is that right? You did uh, Surfer Girls, Jokes My Folks Never Told Me, um, Hots and Halloween. And, and I have not seen all of those movies, but I did do a little bit of research and looked at, at some of the, the topics and the scenes. And um, they, were, they were absolutely late 70s movies designed for 14 to 19 year old boys. <laughs> and um, do you think, we, we talked a little bit about this. Do you think, and first, if you have any stories on any of those movies, we'd love to hear them. Um, but also, do you think movies like that could be made today? 
you know, I recently, I have a, a 23 year old stepdaughter and I recently um, introduced her, well, recently in the last five or six years, introduced her to some of the movies I grew up with, like um, Revenge of the Nerds and Porky's and those movies. And I was, I'll tell you, I, I, for being a guy that liked those movies 25 years ago, I was terribly uncomfortable watching some of those movies with, you know, with the, the, the culture we're in and tr the way I'm trying to raise my daughters. So, so what do you, what do you think about those movies then and now, and could those movies have been made, made today? Um, probably, they probably not, could not be made today just because the culture has changed and there's just a lot of things that have changed. From my perspective, I just don't take movies that seriously. Right. I mean, I'm just kind of a laid back person. I, um, I don't get insulted easily. Um, I just, I don't know. I think people take things way too seriously sometimes and they get all tied up over things that weren't meant that way or I don't know, they just twist them into things that to me that isn't what was meant or whatever. Right. So right. if it was just me, yes, you could just make them, you know, and if someone doesn't want to watch them, if they're offended by it, you know what? that's what remotes are for. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are definitely things I don't care to watch and I just don't watch them. It's that right. simple. If someone else likes it and they want to watch it, go for it. So, oh, yeah, yeah. We're yeah I'm not the next person, I guess, to well, weigh in on that stuff, but I do not think you could probably make them today for those same reasons. Um, I think some of what has happened is good. One of those films, um, Surfer Girls, I don't often talk about because I had a very uncomfortable experience on that set. And these days, because of some of those changes, that wouldn't happen. Okay. So there are some of the things that are good. I think the, the interaction between the director and the, the crew and the actors and stuff, I think is monitored much more now. And that, that part I think is good. But I think that... Um, what actually happens there as far as the movie itself, the, you know, what's supposed to happen, if that's what's happening is what's supposed to happen, that's fine. Right. So if you're supposed to be nude, that's fine. Um, you're probably not supposed to be getting harassed by people on the set. So I think hopefully I'm ho hoping that it seems like that's gone away. We've had a lot of um, turmoil, obviously in Hollywood in the last few years related to that. And I'm hoping that that's taking care of it. So in, in those ways, it's good. But as far as if things are um, like they should be on the set, then I think that what the content is, again, should be up to the viewer if they want to watch it or not. Right. Well, you know, we're, we're out there, we're out there banning cartoons for, uh, you know, a, a, a stupid skunk kissing a, a cat, but yet the number one selling video game is you know you drive cars and run people over and you can shoot people and you can uh, so it's 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 a little bit of a of a weird situation right now and you know and, and being a parent is kind of as I'm sure you know is is trying to monitor what is what is 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 safe but is also what is sane you know I mean you you know you can't you can't you can't monitor everything so in those in those movies uh, like like jokes my folks never told me and hots and uh, some of the other ones what were some of the the I mean did all those come through the Playboy agency and do you have any 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 fun stories? I know you said you had a bad experience on Surfer Girls, and I. But but, do you have any fun experiences on those? I, I know one of them was it was it Hots also featured a couple other Playboy playmates that, that you that you knew. Right. Um, and sorry, I don't remember their names. No, no, that's that's fine. People can look I'm it up. That's old. what internet <laughs> movie databases is for. That's what IMDb is for. Look it up. <laughs> but um, in Gas Pump Girls. Uh, Kirsten yeah, yeah, Baker yeah. from uh, Friday the 13th 2, she was in that also. And that was, we had a ball on that movie. We really did. And so again, that was one of those you probably couldn't make now because it was just um, lots of nudity and stuff. But the whole film was just fun. I mean, there was no real meanness in it. Um, nobody was getting murdered. Um, I mean, even the, uh, sh the, uh, 
Arab sheik that's causing the other gas station to close down. I mean, even he comes around and feels bad, you know, <laughs> the way he behaved. So it was, they were just lighthearted. Same with Hots. Um, you know, there was like in, um, in Gas Pump Girls, a lot of the scenes, I mean, we had music blaring, we were dancing. Uh, it was just a lot of it was almost slapstick stuff. Right. Right. So they were, they were just fun to do. And then Hots was very much the same way, a couple sororities. Um, we were the, I was on the kind of the snotty stuck up girl pie sorority. And then we had the other girls who were, anybody could join those that were overweight or whatever. They welcomed everybody. And so it was the clash of those two uh, cultures. And again, we had, we had a ball uh, doing stuff. So um, yeah, I, I wish that you could still make movies like that because they were a ton of fun. You know, I recently saw, well, in the last couple of years, I, saw, I got a chance to see Mel Brooks speak. And somebody asked the question about uh, what we did. It was a viewing of Blazing Saddles. And then he spoke and did questions afterwards. And somebody asked, could you make this movie today? And he said, um, no. And it absolutely should not have been made today. It was made in a time where, where stuff was lighter and stuff was different. And he had a really good take on that. Kind of, kind of along what you said is that, you know, that, that we, we, were, we made Blazing Saddles so absurd right <laughs> just to make to make the point and and that's why it survived but today we're so conscious about about offense that even the absurdity of blazing saddles would be taken incorrectly and and yeah. so so you're, you're right i remember growing up um watching the usa up all night movies with ronda Shear and gilbert godfrey and those were the kind of movies that, that these hots and, and surfer girls those were those kind of movies the usa up all night movies and i remember watching those and i thought that you know that there definitely was a change um, and, and so you've got a couple movies that are in that are in the works now. You, you didn't act for a long time. And, and when you were doing your education and, and working with the, the you know, your, ed, your teaching. Um, but you've got two movies that are in, in ones in pre and ones in post production, I think is what I read. And you've got Creeps at the Gym. You want to tell us a little bit about Creeps in the Gym? Creeps at the Gym is a, a UK film. Uh, Great Northern Productions is the uh, company. And I was actually supposed to film that last October in the UK, uh, around the same time that I was going to do For the Love of Horror convention. Obviously, both of those got put on hold. So we're coming around another year. At the moment, I am still supposed to do both of them this October. So we'll see. But Creeps at the Gym is, uh, is a very good part for me. I think it'll be a, a creative one that I can add some fun stuff to. I've already kind of changed up a little bit of what I, how I wanted to do it. The director's excited about that. But it's basically a horror movie that takes place at a gym, obviously. And I am a, a massage therapist and kind of a fitness instructor. So that's kind of, uh, and then awful things begin to happen. <laughs> great, great. So how, did, how, what, how did it come about? How did it come about? Did you seek out or did someone seek you out? Because, you know, um, it, you took, took such a long, long break and then were, you know, kind of, I don't want to say rediscovered, but brought back into the world with Halloween, you know, 2018. And so did you decide, was that being part of that? Did that kind of light the fire with you to get back into acting? Yes, that, that that's definitely what, did it I really hadn't really thought about going back into acting first of all I live rural I mean where would I go to interviews and so and I was just busy with other things so whenever my agent found me and we started going to cons and things I saw that a lot of the other people there that had been in movies back in the 70s were still doing movies and I thought you know maybe I'm not too old so that was kind of what began to stir it up a little bit but actually th that one came before I actually started really looking for it the um the director had had I guess he was watching my Facebook one of my Facebooks or something and he contacted me and said ask if I would be interested in um, doing a film and so uh, you know what, actually, what he did first was he sent me one of his other films, which was called Pumpkins, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
And I watched it and I liked it. And so after I watched it and liked it, he said, well, how would you like to do a film? That's right. And so uh, I said, that would be wonderful. And I'm planning on coming to the UK anyway. So that's kind of how that worked out. He sent me the script and we were supposed to film it last year, but now we're um, hopefully praying that this October, it, you know, that it will um, come about because I think it's going to be a fun one. And the other one is, is uh, Volps, Lust for Revenge. Um, now, I, don't, I, I couldn't find a whole lot of information on that one. What, what, is, uh, what is that about? What is the, the, I don't know, I couldn't find the story or anything. Is it, is it an animated film or is it a live action film? No, it's actually a Hungarian film. Okay. And it, it, it's a series of, it's a series. The first one was called Volps, the Prologue. And it, it's the story of a man that gets even with people that abuse animals. Okay. So he, um, in the first one, it, you know, he's obviously torturing the man who had been abusing animals. So what they did was they sent me the prologue. Again, they did not mention any roles. They sent me the prologue to look at it and respond to it. And I thought it was awesome. I mean, it was, it was, the acting was really good. The story was good. The intensity was definitely there. Um, yeah, so the, the photography was so good. So I responded back and I said, you know what? That is really excellent. I really enjoyed it. And that's not always the case when people send me things. I sometimes I just, I can't even really respond. Uh, and then say, well, that's nice, you know, good job. But this one was truly really good. So I responded and he said, he said, well, awesome. And then I, I think a few weeks later, he got back to me. He said, well, this is actually a series. And the next one is going to be called Volps, The Lust for Revenge. And he said, I would like for you to do a cameo in it. And with COVID and everything, of course, flying to uh, Hungary for a, a small um, film, not likely. So that's what I did. I filmed a cameo where I play the mother of one of the victims. Okay. So. And is that going to be a, a third? Is that going to be? A, is there a future in that? Is there going to? Are you going to be in any of the other ones? Have you discussed that yet? Um, it's going to be a series. No, I don't know. But since my son gets killed, I uh, would think not. But. Who am I to say that? And, uh, hey, that maybe part three is called Mom's Revenge and you're the main <laughs> character out, out take, taking yeah. care of everybody, right? Maybe he finds out that mom is also an animal abuser. Right, right, right. So so I know COVID was, was pretty disastrous for the arts. And, um, you know, I lost over 70 shows, a cruise ship and a, and a hotel deal on it and and started oh. this little thing just to um, just to kind of get, get keep the creative juices flowing. And so you, I noticed on your website, you have, um, you know, the cameos where you're doing, you know, kind of videos for fans and stuff. What, what, with the loss of conventions, what, um, what are you, what have you done um, during the, during the last year to kind of keep your creative juices going and to kind of, to keep, um, to keep inspired? I mean, I know, I know a lot of my friends that, that were actors or singers that have just kind of lost motivation now. And it's, it's, it's been really tough for, for, for creatives to get back. So, so what are some of the things that you've done for the last year to kind of keep, keep going? Well, what I've been doing is I have um, a very talented actor who, who lives in LA and he's also a coach. And so um, he has been coaching me either once a week or once every two weeks. And he, um, he just, we go through, he's actually been helping me work through monologues. And when we get them the way he wants them, then my husband helps me film them. And I put them on backstage and access and um, IMDB. So okay. that's what I've been working on. I just finished up a horror one, um, a serial killer that, that he put in one reel with the Halloween scene. So that one just went up. And then we did some other ones, a comedy and some things. So I've been working on those to um, hone my craft, as one might say. Right. So that's what's keeping me motivated. I just stay after. Well, of course, I go and I apply for interviews on those um, websites. 
but to stay there, I just work with my coach. Okay. So, so anything, yeah, anything, you know, anything other than the two in the works? I mean, you have any, any top secret things that you can break to a uh, break to us that are coming up other than the, the two that we had talked about? Um, as far as movies, I have no definites. I definitely have some directors who have said, when I get done with the project I'm doing now, I'm definitely going to consider you. Great. So, and these are people that have reached out on their own. So, um, that is, uh, I'm hoping those come true because I would love it. So I'm just staying ready and looking for it to happen. Well, you, you had mentioned that, that you saw actors and actresses that were from your, your era of horror movies that are still doing horror, you know? And I think a lot of that has to do with directors and writers like Rob Zombie and Jason Blumhouse that are bringing these, I mean, Sig Haig was doing movies, you know, up until I think the day before he died, he was recording, you know, video, or he was, he was filming movies. And, and I think those, those, those people, like I mentioned about Jason Bloom, had grown up being horror fans, and now they're paying tribute to the, to the actors that they grew up watching by bringing, you know, bringing some of those guys back. I mean, you watch some of the Rob Zombie movies, and it's kind of an all-star cast of the horror movies I grew up with. So, right. so I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that these work out for you, and it brings back some of the legends and some of the, the people that really started my love for horror. And, you know, the, 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 the actors and the actresses that, that, that I remember as, as kind of you know, forming my opinion of what good horror is. Um, right. Being a fan of the genre, what are some of the horror movies that you've seen of late in the last 10 years or so that you thought were standout, that you thought were really, really good? Some of the ones I've seen in the last 10 years are not new films. Right. Well, that's <laughs> fine. I so I mean, what are, what are some of the screen, ones that, that are your tops of your list? Yeah, I really love Scream. I thought that was great. Um, I loved, of course, Psycho and Shining. Those are my, you know, my favorites from long ago. I'm trying to think. Christine, I saw last year and love it. Love it. Uh, in fact, there's a guy named Ernie that's making me a model of Christine, the dilapidated one, and he is so talented. And when it gets it, when I get it, I'm actually, I'll do a Facebook post about it because he's so talented and I tried to buy it but he's sending it to me as a gift awesome. so it's just so cool and it's it's just going to be awesome for my collection but yeah Christine I really liked uh, I finally saw the first Friday the 13th and I liked it well I like uh, that too and, and what, what's funny about why I like that one is because Jason's not the killer I spoil alert for anybody that hasn't seen a movie that was out 40 years ago but um, <laughs> But Jason's not the killer. And I, I thought that was such a great twist on, on the, you know, the way they took the, the franchise that it was his mother. Right. So I was trying to think, I, oh, oh, and I saw The Fog, which was fabulous, of course. So well, I have, I have a list of, of them. I'm just really pretty busy. So I don't have a lot of time. So I'm trying to fit them in. So Christine and the Fog were two of the ones more recent that I really liked. Well, and Adrian Barbeau is in the Fog, and um, I, I I tell this story often. I don't know that I've ever told it on on my show, but I tell my friends often. Um, Adrian Barbeau is single handedly responsible for my heterosexuality. Um, I uh, <laughs> the movie Swamp Thing. I remember when I saw Swamp Thing, and I thought, Oh my God, this is. This is something I think I can be into for the rest of my life. And, uh, and so, so every, I apologize to the whole world, but blame Adrian Barbeau. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, that was Swamp Thing was one of the first movies I remember. Um, I had a babysitter uh, that watched, we watched Children of the Corn when I was probably 10 or 11. And I remember that, that being so terrifying not necessarily for the killings and the violence and the, the but the music. I remember or that early in my in my you know my childhood, remembering how terrifying the children's voices in that background music were, and that kind of honed my my interest and kind of piqued me for being a nerd about horror movies. So you do a lot of conventions. That's kind of what uh, um, has kind of taken the place of you know touring for rock bands. Is there's horror conventions and comic cons, and I've I've performed and and, and lectured at a couple of comic cons, and so I, I I know kind of the the vibe of them. But tell us some of your uh, your 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 favorite and least favorite uh, convention stories. Um, I've recently started watching uh, the the TV show Supernatural, and I know I'm 20 years behind on it, but I just recently started watching, and then I noticed that there are supernatural conventions all over the world, all over the world. 
So, so tell us a little bit about how you got into the convention circuit and some of the uh, some of your 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 high points of of the conventions. Well, again, whenever I got that text, the very first text from my agent Rick and Reeks, he um, was telling me on the phone about I mean on the text that um, a lot of people all over the world knew who I was <laughs> and that. Uh, a lot of them would go to these things called horror cons and that people would go there and you would sign autographs and, and meet people. And so this was like a whole new world to me. I had no idea. So he said, would you want to do this? And so I said, I, I guess so. I mean, I like people. Sure. Why not? So the first one, there were some others coming up, but he wanted me to wait until Halloween 28. Uh, yeah, 2018, but it was H40. I think H40 was the convention in Pasadena. So he said, I don't want you to do one. I want H40 to be where we where they see you for the first time. So that was a few months later. So I did the, um, I was trying to remember if the premiere or the con came first. I think the con came first, yeah. So I did, I did the con and I mean, I had no idea what to expect. So I went in and, you know, I went in and he already had the table set up and there's a big banner with my pictures on it, pictures all over the table. And he says, okay, you're just gonna sit here and you're just gonna sign pictures and talk to the fans. <laughs> so they opened the door and like within three minutes, I had this huge line of fans and I'm just, I'm like looking around <laughs> at the line and I'm going oh my gosh all these people are here to see me so it was just, it was a very I don't know it was kind of overwhelming but at the same time it was awesome because they were just they were so happy to me to see me but they were just like there was so much enthusiasm and love coming from them that I could just feel it I could just feel those vibes and so I was just like in heaven all day I had the best time uh, meeting the fans and hugging them and getting pictures and uh, hearing their stories. So yeah, that was my first one and I had a blast. So then when we were done, my agent asked me, he says, you know, not everybody who's done one of these wants to do it again or wants to do them every time they come up with, you know, what are your thoughts? And I said, are you kidding? <laughs> I want to do all of them. You can put me in. This is great. So I've done, I don't know, maybe seven or so now. And I actually had like seven booked last year. So obviously they, I didn't get to go. And it was so disappointing because I was really looking forward to them. So that was my first one. So obviously it has um, made a big impact on me. But then the one in, in uh, Maryland, I really enjoyed because it was actually a more, a more low key one. So I actually had more time to really visit longer with the fans and stuff. So that was kind of a different, uh, kind of a different experience, but also really good. I had a great time visiting with the fans at that one. The, um, let's see, the one at, I guess that was Monster Mania. Hmm. Was in New Jersey. That was probably Monster Mania. I actually got food poisoned at the hotel, so that wasn't good. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so, luckily, I didn't get it till the last day. So, when I got home, I was sick for about four days. So, I remember that one because of being so sick. Um, Texas Frightmare was awesome. The only thing was, it was like 102 degrees in there. And they had these huge floodlights and they were like halogens. So the whole floor was just way too hot. Um, but other than, other than the heat, it was a great convention. We had a really good time at that one too. So yeah, I mean, I was Days of the Dead, Atlanta, that was fun. I, I mean, really there hasn't been a, a bad con. I've enjoyed them all. Great. What are some of the, uh, the most ridiculous things people have asked you to sign? I mean, I imagine you've signed you know, tons of Halloween, the 78 Halloween posters, probably a few clown masks in your photos. What is something that, that stands out as being just ridiculous that people have asked you to sign? Hmm. Well, I think 
really, they haven't asked me anything ridiculous, but they've asked me to sign things that are hard to sign. Okay. One of them was the uh, clown costume because it's so silky. Right. Okay. And so getting it to sit still uh, because it's double layer. (laughs) And so that was hard. One of the fun things that I signed was they had built a Myers house model. It was pretty good size and it was the dilapidated version, but it played music. It played the music and I got to sign the side of it. So that was fun. Very fun. Yeah. So um, there were, I mean, there have been, you know, little statues and things that are rare and all the people around that were going, Oh my God, where did you get that? And of course, I had no idea that it was rare, but they're all uh, making a fuss over it. So it was fun to sign those. When I saw, I think on your website, you can vote to have a Funko statue or a Funko figure. Is that right? Yeah, they have uh, in the Funko, they have a, they have a place on their website where I guess if enough people uh, request you that hopefully eventually you get one. And I just thought that would be so fun to have one. Yeah. Um, well, so I'll everybody I, watching to go to, go to unicornsandyj.com and vote to have a, a, a Funko doll made a Funko figure. Made. <laughs> I would love that. It would give me something else to sign. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, I, 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 be, I, uh, I'm sorry. I would have to be cute. I mean, with the little pink ribbon and all that. I mean, I would think it would make a cute doll. <laughs> and, a, and an accessory would be a brush, right? Maybe a brush. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I um, I, I uh, this is maybe a good time for me to plug this. I'm going to be in New Orleans um, on um, April 16th and 17th, 23rd and 24th, doing my my Blue Book uh, Storyville Seance show. And um, tickets, I know tickets are, we have under 10 tickets left for each show. But I, what I, what, the reason I plugged that is I wanted to make sure that you know that uh, um, I own, I'm part owner of a restaurant in the, in the French Quarter called the New Orleans Vampire Cafe. And um, I want to invite you down anytime to come down and maybe we'll set up a, a showing of the original Halloween and have you sign some autographs and take some questions. So if you ever find yourself in New Orleans, make sure you, uh, you let me know ahead of time and we'd, we'd love to, to put you up and have you come down and, 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 and talk to some people at the Vampire Cafe. We opened Ooh. on June. January 1st and we have been it has been gangbusters it has been it has been wow. successful beyond my what I expected and cool. uh, I'm, I'm down there about 10 days every month and so I'm getting to do some shows again and things are starting nice. to open up a little bit but please if you're yeah, ever in the area awesome. come come and see us I've never actually been to New Orleans oh well it's uh it's I love the city so much that I've decided I cannot live there so so it would be a, <laughs> it would be it would be a problem so um <laughs> But I've got, so you've got uh, a couple other things here that I wanted to talk about. Your favorite horror movies, um, the, the Halloween, and then um, some, of the, some of the fun parts about Halloween, and I, and I, I want to get back to this because we, I failed to mention it earlier, are, and we've got about 15 minutes left. So if you guys have any questions uh, for Sandy, please chime in and, and uh, we can get them answered. Also, if you would please think of sending me um, the link to the eBay store where people can buy some of the, the more adult things. I'll make sure that gets disseminated amongst the followers as well. Um, I, I wouldn't know how to look that up, but I imagine you have an access to the link. So if you'd send that to me. Yeah, I, I don't know that he actually has a store. I'd actually have to check on that. I think if they just go to the adult part of eBay okay, okay. and do a search Sandy well, Johnson autographs, I okay. think that it would all come up. Okay, if, uh, if somebody out there has access to the Facebook, uh, go ahead and post it if you can find it for me. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, but one of the fun things about the first Halloween that I love, and this is, you know, I was talking about Rob Zombie throwing, you know, tributes back to the movies that he grew up with, is that John Carpenter grew up with Alfred Hitchcock movies. So, so he went out of his way to bring in a couple, you know, Hitchcock connections. And, and I don't know, did you have a lot of interaction with other, other actors? Or did they just bring you in, do your shot and, 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 and go? Did you get a chance to interact with any of the other actors or actresses? The... Um... I did react a little bit with Jamie Lee. She was in the changing area with me. So we did some interaction, but I don't remember. Um, I mean, obviously, David Kyle, my boyfriend, obviously we interacted, but that was, I think that was, I would imagine with the shooting schedule they had, if they didn't have to be there, they probably right, right, weren't. Right, right. <laughs> Well, so some of the, the two connections that I found in looking up the Hitchcock connection, obviously, was Jamie Lee Curtis. You know, her mother was uh, the famous, you know, from from Psycho. And right. her father, 
uh, and I, I uh, the woman that played her father was Tippi Hedren's husband, and you know from the Birds. And I thought that was kind of a fun. And and, and in, the, in the research I did, it said that John Carpenter searched out connections for. So so maybe this is you know what's going on with the Jason Blooms and Rob Zombies of today is kind of a a horror movie thing where they're bringing back you know people that they grew up with. So. Um, well, I think uh, if anybody has any questions or, or uh, Sandy, if you have anything else, I'm kind of, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I've hit you with everything I've, I've come up with in the last month and a half since we started talking about this. You're, we talked about your favorite horror movies and I, um, I just read an article this morning that, uh, that talked about some of the best endings in horror movies and some of the, you know, and, and the, they listed the best and the worst endings. And, and I, I love that the, the, the genre of horror that, that you were, were part of, it always set up to where they didn't know if there was going to be a second one, but they left the door open just in case there was a second one. I, and I always thought that was fun. I always thought that was a lot of fun. So um, we've got a couple, uh, a friend, Bill Barkley from New York says that he worked with Dean Cundy, Cundy on a different picture and that he was a great cameraman. Do you, do you know the, the name Dean, C-U-N-D-E-Y? Um, yes, I'm trying. I was, he was, he was definitely on one of my films because I remember his name, but I don't remember which film. Yeah. And then um, uh, Zeke Power said, is there's an adult section of eBay? He learned so much from these shows. So, <laughs> so I think, we, <laughs> just, I, I think uh, we may have just turned Zeke's life around. So um, <laughs> guys, if you'll check out uh, unicornsandyj.com and um, I'll be back with another show on, on the 11th of April. And we were having Father Sebastian, who is the leader of the um, Sabretooth clan. It's a, it's a vampire group. He's an expert and an author of vampire culture. He runs the Endless Night Ball, which is a, an international vampire ball that happens on Halloween. And then the following week will be Lothar Malberg, who we've talked about. He's been a, uh, a friend of the show for a long time. And he, we're going to talk about um, the role of faith. In, in Supernatural. He is a, a, an evangelical Christian who, who performs seance magic, and we're going to talk about that. Well, there's a good question for you. This is something I ask. As being part of uh, the horror the horror culture and horror genre, what scares you? What scares, I mean, what scares you? What, what, are, what are some of the things that, that are, are you, uh, do you have a ghost? Do you have a paranormal? A lot of the, a lot of the shows, uh, people have, have been, have paranormal experiences. Do you, do you have any of those? Do you have any paranormal experiences or have any, uh, any, anything that, uh, yeah, actually I do. When I was in middle school, I had a best friend and um, she had some health issues. So we were, we bonded, I think, over that. I was kind of skinny and tall and kids made fun of me and she had this physical issue and people made fun of her. So I think we really bonded as very good friends. Her name was Kathleen. And I moved uh, from Texas to California. And she was supposed to be coming to see me. And I, I was in middle school. And a couple days before she was supposed to come, I woke up screaming. And my mother came in and says, what's wrong? And I said, Kathy's dead. Kathy's dead. And my mother said, what? You're just having a nightmare. And I said, no, Kathy's dead. I know. She told me. And so my mother got a hold of Kathy's grandmother and um, she'd been shot. She was dead. Wow. So yeah, it gives me chills thinking back because it totally, well, first of all, it was horrible for me because she was my best friend, but um, yeah. So she obviously came to me and told me uh, that she was gone. And you were how old? 12, 12 ish, 13. Uh, yeah, I was probably 12 or 13. Okay. Wow. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty heavy. That's a heavy story. That's, uh, that's pretty awesome. I mean, in the, in the big way. So, so, yeah, any, uh, so okay. So Bill Barkley, says, Bill Barkley says that he was the director of photography on Halloween. Also the fog and the thing for John Carpenter. That's okay. That's, that's where, thanks. Thanks, Bill. Uh, that's where Dean, Dean had worked. So you, you, you knew him from Halloween. So, okay. Cool. So what, what scares you? What, what is something that I asked, uh, I had a, a guy on that was a, a homicide detective who had done tons of research and had then been in shootouts. And I asked him what scared him and he said spiders. <laughs> so, so he had been shot at by bad guys trying to kill him and he, he was afraid of spiders. So um, I, I would imagine that there's probably something in your psyche that worries about clowns. 
Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, there are a couple things, one of which are scorpions. I okay. really don't like scorpions. Well, in and North so Texas, you probably have Texas, several, right? I have, yes, in Texas, I have multiple tools that are scorpion related. <laughs> I have one that sucks them up. I have one that grabs them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I don't like scorpions. Uh, I used to be terrified of, of spiders, but when I was a science teacher, I worked so much with snakes and spiders that I kind of got over that. But I don't know. I never quite got past the scorpion with their creepy little tail and stuff. <laughs> um, the other thing I don't like is because when I was little, um, we lived in San Antonio and, um, when I would, I liked to, my mother, my mother, um, had a lot of issues, emotional issues. And sometimes she was kind of into herself. Uh, I loved her dearly. That's not a knock of anything. It's just who she was. She loved me, but sometimes she had mental issues and she just wasn't there as a mother, like she should have been. So I wandered a lot. I was very adventurous. I would go out to the railroad tracks and sit next to the tracks. I would take a lunch to the park. I spent a lot of time alone out in San Antonio by myself at very young ages. And um, one of the things that always terrified me would be if a bunch of guys would surround me and start taunting me and coming at me and stuff. And it just terrified me. And I that always helped, right? got yeah. saved. Yeah, I always got saved by somebody else who would be near or hear me yelling and stuff. And they would come, you know, make them all leave me alone. So, yeah, that feeling of being surrounded by a mob or whatever. It also happened in San Antonio. We were at a, a parade, the Fiesta Parade. I don't even know if they have it anymore in San Antonio. But it was always massive mobs of people. And a float was going by in front of me and it caught on fire. And all the people just like started running and screaming at me and around me and stuff. Same sort of feeling where uh, just overwhelming people coming at you and, you know, just out of control, nothing you can do. So scorpions and mobs of people coming towards me, I'm not happy with yeah. <laughs> that's great. I, I I did expect to hear clowns, but I'm gonna imagine that that's probably one you keep you keep a little tight close to the vest. <laughs> so, um, and I, and for for everybody out there that's watching, I know that I, I mentioned uh, the the homicide detective Keith Olson. Um, I also have a note here. One of the cases he and I talked about on the show, and it was this was God one of the first shows I did was the Janelle Matthews case that happened here in Greeley, and um, 48 hours last night was about Janelle Matthews. So if you get a chance to, to look on it on demand, you can kind of see an update on what Keith and I talked about on the Janelle Matthews uh, case. It's on 48 hours and I watched it this morning on demand. It's pretty uh, pretty telling. There's been some pretty ugly new developments in it and they've, they've made an arrest. So, well, Sandy, I will, uh, I will uh, let you get back to your Sunday afternoon. I'm glad that uh, we got to reschedule and I'm glad that you got your shot. So hopefully yeah. that means that uh, we will see each other out on the road someday at a convention or, or uh, I'll get a chance to, to to, to buy you and your husband dinner down at the Vampire Cafe in New Orleans, come down and see us. And um, again, uh, we'll look at, uh, look at unicornsandyj.com and vote for the Funko doll. And uh, we'll have the, low, the post. I imagine Zeke Powers has already found the adult section on eBay, so he can post it on there <laughs> if, you, if you found it, Zeke, if you'll post it on there. Sandy, you've been, you've been a, a lot of fun, and I'm so glad that this worked out to do. And hopefully we, uh, we can have you back when, um, when Creeps at the Gym comes back out. We can have you kind of talk about that. So um, if, you, if, yeah, if you have anything you want to plug other than what we've talked about or anything you want to say or anybody you want to bad mouth, uh, we've, uh, we've gotten to do that on the show as well. So if you have anything bad to say, go ahead and say it now. Uh, yeah, well, just uh, kudos to my agent, Rick and Reeks. He's awesome. I love him. Uh, love to all the fans. Thank you for visiting with me on Facebook. If you're not a fan on Facebook, it's um, at The Real Sandy Johnson. Um, I'd love to visit with you there. And I just, um, I love you all. And I, I hope to make some movies soon. So if you're in the movie business, let me know. Well, and if you're ever out, you have family in Colorado. If you're ever out this way, give me a holler and, I, and I'd love to sit down and have, have a coffee with you. 
So awesome. Andy, have a great Sunday, everybody else. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, I took uh, my, my publicist, Aaron, came up yesterday and we took hundreds and hundreds of photos of skulls and haunted objects and of, of my collection. So you're going to see a bu bunch of that popping up on Instagram and Facebook soon. And uh, thank you guys. And uh, as always, listen to Bill Hicks. Thanks a lot. Sandy, have a great Sunday. Thank you. Bye. Take care.